In a typical year, the hot stove season in baseball would be burning pretty hot right now. Of course, this isn't a typical year. And the Cardinals and the rest of the league have been very quiet. In a time where payroll concerns are paramount, the Cardinals likely won't make any big moves this offseason. However, they could still bring back their two key veterans, Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright. And if you ask skipper Mike Schilt, he's not even thinking about not having number four back behind the plate at Bush. You know, my head's not there. Um, I, I don't, you know, choose to put my, my mindset there because, you know, it's a hard place for me to go um, mentally. I'm not naive that it may not, you know, he may not come, you know, he may not come back. I, I get that. Uh, and then we'll pivot. But um, as far as putting mental energy towards thinking about um, number four, not being behind the plate for us, I haven't put a lot of consideration to that. You technically can't say the Cardinals have done nothing so far this offseason. Today, they signed infielder Jose Rondon to a minor league deal with a spring training invite. Rondon is a career 201 hitter in 106 games for the Padres, White Sox, and Orioles. National Signing Day may have been Wednesday, but a pair of St. Charles Lutheran stars had some big news of their own today. Defensive tackle Gabriel Rubio signed to Notre Dame, and human highlight reel junior running back Arlen Harris Jr. committed to Stanford. Harris had offers from pretty much every college in the country, but it was Stanford's academic prestige that put them over the top. Stanford's just a place for me. Um, Stanford is that, 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 that culture where I can get the best of both worlds. It can challenge me athletically and academically, and that's what I've been searching for in the school. You know, I was blessed to play football at a certain level, but what he's able to do academically, I told him that the football is going to go flat someday. So once he steps on that campus, he can write his own ticket no matter what. So football is actually a second for us. So when you uh, walk into a door and say Stanford, it's going to hold a little bit more weight down in the future. How about that big win for SLU last night over NC State? The Billikens responded from a sloppy first half to go on a 32-14 run to close it out for the win and stay undefeated. They were led by their point guard, Yuri Collins, more known for his passing ability, but who showed off his nose for scoring last night when his team had to have it, tallying a career-high 17 points. It was probably like 12 minutes left in the first half. He told me, he said, I'm about to start going. I said, what you mean? He said, just run with me. I said, all right. So, I mean, when he get down there, I guess he just started being aggressive, started looking for himself because we was missing shots for him. So, I mean, he, he can score the ball down there with ease, as you can see. But, uh, I mean, just, just seeing him grow uh, in one year, it's just, it's just crazy how good he's playing right now. That's it for sports. Morgan, back to you. Thanks, Morgan. It's not exactly a big secret around town that the Cardinals need more offense in 2021. It's also no secret they prefer not to spend any more money. So, what next? The Cardinals had the fourth worst slugging percentage in all of baseball in 2020 and the fifth worst OPS. But with finances around the league where they are right now, don't expect the team to address the problem by just throwing money at it this winter. For manager Mike Schilt, he's planning on operating with the team he has, but wouldn't mind an offensive infusion. Wouldn't be truthful if I didn't say a, a, you know, a strong anchor in the middle of the lineup to support our offense would, um, would, would be a benefit, but I'm also clearly comfortable and confident and we'll spend my energy in what we do have. If you've driven over the Poplar Street Bridge in the past few days, you may have seen this billboard touting all the St. Louis kids who signed with Mizzou on Wednesday. The future is certainly bright, but right now Eli Drinkwitz and his team are focused on their season finale tomorrow with Mississippi State. The Tigers still have a sour taste in their mouths after the drubbing Georgia gave them last week and coach has a simple message for his guys the rest of this season. I know I'm proud of this football team for the fight and, and endurance they've shown throughout and what they're going to continue to show. But uh, we'll learn a lot more in these last two weeks. The way you finish is, is going to be, you know, how you're defined. And and uh, we hit a bump in the road Saturday, and we, we got to bounce back, and we got to finish. We got to finish, and, and uh, that's the message to the team this week. How about our three big college hoops programs right now? After last night, between Mizzou, Illinois, and SLU, there are combined 16 and two on the season. One of those losses is just because Mizzou and Illinois played each other. All three have not been ranked in the top 25 at the same time since February of 1994. I'd bet on SLU joining the other two when the new poll comes out next week. And finally, the coolest thing I've seen in the past two days. That's Tiger Woods and his 11-year-old son, Charlie, on the range. Totally in sync, down to the club twirl at the end. How cool is that? Tiger and Charlie are playing in a father-son tournament in Florida this weekend. I will be watching for sure, but hopefully not too much pressure on Charlie. First time out with Dad.